Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. This week we are going to go for a tour of the Slaughterhouse. I'll run through the different approaches to the compound, some key areas, and then I'll go into a detailed breakdown of the boss lair itself. The compound is reasonably small, only consisting of two buildings, and a covered stable area. The east side is protected by a high fence, but the other angles of approach are all reasonably open. Let's start off by talking about the nearby spawn points. The slaughterhouse is very close to the southern edge of the map, and it has one spawn point down the hill to the east, and one down the hill to the west. Now both of these spawns could also lead players to an adjacent compound, but always be prepared to fight over the slaughterhouse clue if you head directly to it off spawn. If you head straight to the slaughterhouse without making noise from either of these spawns, you usually won't have to worry about players from spawns further east or west, as you will be out of line of sight before they can come and check where you spawned in. We shall begin our tour here on the east side approach. Behind us is Catfish Swamp and a line of trees, and in the front we see an open field. This field often has zombies, hives, crows, and explosive barrels, so I usually prefer to go around rather than across this field. The advantage of this approach is that there are very few sight lines from inside the compound that can see you out here. The shed blocks line of sight from the White House, and the fence will block line of sight from the boss building and the central courtyard. The disadvantage of this approach is that there are only three ways to get into the compound from the east. There is this gate and ladder structure, which can leave you quite exposed as you cross over it, and then there is this second crank gate, which is also noisy and slow. Finally, there is this hole in the fence that must be crouched through. All three of these entrances have minimal cover on either side. They favour fast assaults where you plan to keep moving as soon as you get into the compound. Let's move around to the north side. This is characterised by a road separating the compound from a line of trees, and then there's a pasture leading north to the church. The trees on the northeast corner are excellent for getting close while concealed, and it gives you the choice of using entrances to either the north or the east. The line of trees on the north side here is a great place to listen and scope out the compound before you enter. You also have a good view of the White House, which is a key location that many use to defend the compound. One thing that you have to be really careful of is other teams coming up behind you, as the large field can leave you open to a flank. There are plenty of ways in from the north. There is a door and a ladder into the White House, there's a vaultable part of the fence into the animal pen, or you can simply walk straight down the path to the slaughterhouse courtyard. Now across this road we have the east side approach. This primarily consists of the cornfield, which although it provides excellent cover from most of the compound, you will be exposed to anyone on the second floor of the White House. You can climb up this silo to get a great view of the entire area all the way up to church, but it also leaves you extremely vulnerable if you're spotted. You really don't want to fight from up here. If you start getting shot at, get down and hide in the corn. If you move closer to the fence, there is a significant amount of decent cover but there's also the presence of several explosive barrels, which should make you wary. Now if you do plan to duel someone in the house from here, blow up those barrels first. This clump of trees further south offers valuable concealment, when approaching from Devant Ranch or transitioning from an eastern to southern approach. Just be aware that there are plenty of sound traps here. There's normally at least two murders of crows and a chicken coop. Moving to the southern approach, we can see a spawn point, along with a very common extraction location. The southern edge here has plenty of trees and other soft cover, and it doesn't take long before you are completely concealed from the White House, leaving only a few doors from the boss building to conceal possible enemies. If you suspect that other hunters are trying to defend this compound while sitting in the White House, this is a good angle to approach from if you don't feel like challenging that position. So as we have seen, the north, west and south sides are very open, with lots of ways to cross into the compound, but the east side still only has those three entrances. You can however get out the east side very quickly, due to these stacks of hay that can be mantled to get over the fence. And you can do that over here as well. Now before we move on to the compound interior, I would just like to remind everyone that 4FS Gaming now has our Patreon page up and running. It allows people who like our videos to support us in making more and higher quality content, and also get early access to some videos, 
and a say in what kind of videos we put together. You can check all of that out in the description below. So on the inside of the compound, we have the main yard. This area is infested with grunts, sometimes a meathead, and often has explosive barrels. It is also very exposed to shooters in both the main building and the White House. I tend to stay out of here unless I need to grab a clue. This shed, however, is much better to sit in, provided you can clear out the armoured that often sits here first. You can use this area and that hole in the fence behind you to sneak very close to the main building without being seen, and you can push in rapidly after that through this sliding fence. Just be careful because the White House windows do have open line of sight to this area, so make sure it's cleared out first. Now I've mentioned it a lot, but this White House is probably the most critical part of this entire compound. It has a lot of sight lines to almost every direction, and it's large enough to move about in to avoid explosives, you can get up on the roof, escape or enter it in lots of different ways, and it often houses the compound clue. Controlling this building is pretty important in that you can't really attack the boss room from any direction other than the south if this house is occupied. It has a generator here, which may be used to mask footsteps, and it also has a vaultable window and a door on this side. The north side is maybe the safest to enter from, it has a door or a ladder up to the balcony. Once up the ladder, you can choose to vault directly inside, or you can move across here to check the room through the window first. The balcony also offers an entrance to the main room of the house, and access to the roof. Now from the ground on the west, you can enter through a window, a door, or another window. Once inside, we see that the house is very compartmentalised. It's also close to some noisy dogs, that will get set off if you stomp around too much inside. There are some sneaky sight lines in this area as well to the rest of the house. Moving upstairs, we can find the only south facing window, which can cover the eastern entrance to the boss room, but not a whole lot more than that. The north side of the house provides three windows in different directions, giving you excellent views of the rest of the compound, the woods to the north, and the cornfields to the west. Now the main danger about being in this house is if you let people get too close to you, you can lose your advantage, and they may be able to throw in some grenades or rush you with shotguns. If you head out onto the roof, there are also some great sight lines in all directions except the north. However, like all rooftops, you are going to be fairly exposed. Fortunately, the slope on this roof is such that you can use it as cover to peek over, affording you a decent amount of protection, at least from the east and the west. Now let's move into the boss lair itself. This entire building is the boss lair, and as soon as you step foot inside, you are in its territory. It is very large, but only single story. Another feature of this lair is that it has a lot of holes, missing planks of wood and such that allow easy entrances for grenades and dynamite. On the west side, we have this small door, which can be barred, but it is not always barred, and there is also this more protected slide door, which will make more noise. Around the south, we can find two more red doors, both of which may or may not be barred depending on your luck, and of course, whether they're barred or not will spawn differently every game. Around the next corner to the east, we can use these haystacks to take different peaking angles, and on this side we find three windows. At least one of these will always spawn with the red frame that can be opened, but other times they can be boarded up or blocked with metal. To the north we can find these double slide doors, they are noisy, but give you room to avoid traps while entering. And the final, perhaps the most important entrance, is this small vaultable window hidden away. You cannot see what's on the other side, so to prevent getting shotgunned or landing on a bear trap or concertina, I recommend throwing in an explosive first before jumping through. The cloud of dust it makes will also give you great cover to push out from once you're inside. So there are certainly lots of ways for people to get into this lair, plus the holes in the walls that bullets and explosives might travel through as well. Note, however, that the boss lair is kind of divided into east and west sections, with two entryways allowing passage. Through using bear traps or concertinas, you can actually cordon off an entire half of the boss lair, and then not have to worry about all of the entrances in that half. 
A number of other important places is this slit here, which allows you to see the hill coming up from Devant. But you are going to make noise if you move around here due to all the pots, pans and cans next to you. This slit here allows for a sneaky view of the southern White House window, and parts of the roof. I have used this to secure some sneaky shots on people who use the house to watch the area while preparing an attack on the lair. We also have these holes in the northeastern corners, which allow you to shoot out of, and are especially useful with shotguns for when enemies are moving around the north and east sides. One final note, if you want to kill the spider silently in here, then you should do it in this room with the low roof so that she always stays in melee range. And right there, we will bring to an end our tour of the slaughterhouse. If you enjoyed this video, or found it useful, please like and subscribe. If you have any other tips for this compound you would like to share, drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, this is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.